Well, welcome to Real Talk with Jordan Riley, where the real talk does not come from me. It comes directly from God's word. And before we get started today, please consider subscribing to our channel, giving this a thumbs up, and supporting what we do by going to realtalkwithjordan.com. Well, recently I did an episode about the top so-called Christian YouTube channels that you should unsubscribe from, but your guys' comment section blew up and you shared with me many people that I either didn't include or maybe should include. So because of you guys, this is part two of so-called Christian YouTube channels that you should unsubscribe from. So are you ready? Let's go. But what you and I do not have the right to do is to slander, discredit, excuse me, or lie against another individual. He's already immoral. I mean, he has no morals at all. When you go full board and whole hog with it and you make your bad perceptions, slanderous and salacious pronouncements against an individual's character for the sake of clicks and, 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 and likes, Please like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell. That's foul. That's weak. That's whack. You have people like David Morrow who are liars. These weak, sorry excuse for men, slanderous and salacious pronouncements against an individual's character. I'm not going to take, you know, uh, did what Christians Twinkies from him. Sorry excuse for men. David, no moral. David, no moral. David. No moral, because one thing I don't do is make false accusations against people and then try to make excuses when those false accusations could never be supported. Well, starting off our list is Pastor Seiko Woods. And let me be very clear, he is not a pastor. There's no such thing as an internet pastor. That does not exist. But Seiko has a lot of other issues and reasons why you should not be following him. Here's just a few. First of all, he is extremely narcissistic. If you watch his channel, you would see that quite a bit. That goes against Matthew 20, verse 26. Also, he bullies a lot of people. You saw that in that video. He's done that to me personally, which is why I blocked him on Facebook. That goes against Galatians 6, verse 1, and Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 and 32. He lies about people and slanders them. This is wrong. You saw that in that video also as well. This goes against Exodus 20, verse 16. He's bearing false witness against his neighbor. And he also affirms and works with and interviews false teachers. He did that with Julie Royce, who is absolutely a godless woman. That goes against 2 John chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. See, Seiko's attitude and channel are not Christ-like at all. And he seems to point you more to where you can send him money than to God's word. And for those reasons, you need to mark and avoid Seiko Woods. Secondly on our list is Marcus Rogers. And this man is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Watch this. Where do you even see the word Trinity in the Bible? That is a man-made word because it's a man-made false doctrine. Where do you even see the word Trinity in the Bible? That is a man-made word because it's a man-made false doctrine. Well, you see right there, Marcus denies the Trinity and says that it's nowhere found in scripture. And please understand that if you deny the Trinity, you are not a Christian because you're believing in a different God. But it gets worse. Check this out. Uh, Acts 2.38. Then Peter said unto them, repent, one action, and be baptized, two actions, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's three separate actions. So anybody who tells you, oh, you don't have to be baptized, it says clearly that if you're not baptized, you will be damned. So according to Marcus, if you're not baptized, you're damned and you're going to hell and you're not saved. What? What? Said no verse ever. No, I'm sorry, this is not even close to biblical. But there is no work that we can do to save us. Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9 is very, very clear. But Marcus loves to twist scripture just enough so it seems he's right, but he's not even close. Now, check out this next clip where he's going to say that if you don't speak in tongues, you're not saved either. Hmm. These signs will. Some versions say these signs shall. Uh, accompany those who believe in my name, they will drive out demons. 
They will speak in new tongues. They will speak. If you believe, you will speak in new tongues. Those who believe in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. If you believe, you will. And the Bible is not a lie. So according to Marcus Rogers, a little she rode a Honda, should have bought a Kia, had about a Honda. Bought a Honda, should have bought a Yamaha. You know, if you say that, then you're saved. That's proof that you're saved. No, it's not. It's nowhere found in scripture. And again, Paul addresses that in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 30. Do you all speak in tongues? No. 1 Corinthians 12, 11. That God, give, the God, the Holy Spirit, gives gifts to who he wills, who he determines. And not everybody has certain gifts. We don't have all the same gifts. So Marcus Rogers is wrong biblically. Please unsubscribe from Marcus Rogers and stop following him today. Next on our list is Vlad Savchuk. Now, Vlad has a humongous following, and he's rising very, very rapidly in the ranks of the false teachers these days. He's part of the Demon Slayers. Da, 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 Demon Slayers. Uh, no, that's a problem right there. Where, where did Jesus or the apostles call us to be demon slayers? Like, that's our mission to go out and kill those nasty demons. We got to chop their heads off. <laughs> no, not at all. Plus, if you look at, look at Vlad's channel, Everything is about demons. There's a demon behind that. There's a demon of thumb sucking spirits. There's a demon of masturbation. There's demons everywhere. Where are these demons in scripture? Nowhere. Watch this. Addiction to nicotine, addiction to alcohol, spirit of alcohol, spirit of beer drinking, spirit of wine drinking, spirit of mockery, spirit of a strong drink, spirit of a hangover, addiction to chocolate, addiction to pop, bedwetting, addiction to habitual lip biting in the name of Jesus, compulsion, knuckle cracking, tantrums and fits, thumb sucking. Move in the name of Jesus right now. And you're gonna say it with me right now, said no verse ever. I'm sorry guys, I don't remember seeing any of these spirits in the Bible, do you? No, because they're not there. Also, he claims, and this is shocking, he claims that demons have sex with us. <laughs> what do you mean by that? What? Now, in most of the religions of this world, they had these demons, they call them incubus and succubus, where this male demon or male entity that will come in the sleep and have sex with women and this female entity that will come and have sex with men seduce them, sometimes steal their children. And so there was a lot of myths that were going on both in Jewish culture and in other cultures. But these are not myths. These are realities of things that people are battling with and people are struggling with. So Vlad's channel is Hungry Generation. And let me be really clear with you. This is really the honest truth. And that Vlad's channel and Vlad Savchuk, he's not hungry for God's word. He's not hungry to see people touched by God. No, no, no. He's hungry for your money. He's hungry for the attention it gets because it gets him on TV, it gets him you know, touring around the United States, it gets him platforms that he couldn't have if he just was a normal Bible preaching pastor. He also teams up with false teachers like Benny Hinn, Greg Locke, and David Diga Hernandez. This man twists scripture, lies about God's word, and is obsessed with demonology. Please mark and avoid Vlad Savchuk. Next is Daniel Adams. And Daniel Adams is one of the worst actors you will ever see. And please, I'm telling you, this guy gets an F minus for acting. Watch this. Hey, 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 come here, dude. Yeah, ah, ah. Hey, I bind you in Jesus' name. Get over here. To your knees. Oh no! Ah! Ah, to ah! your knees. To your knees. Oh, I'm Stay sorry. there. Stay there. Stand back up. I'm sorry. Stand back up. I want to hit you. Then come on. Ah! Oh. Mm. I promise I'll get you. Come on. And your family. Come on. And all these people. I will kill them. And kill you. I will hurt you. I can't. I can't. Ah! So Daniel's part of the Demon Slayers Club. You know, da 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 da. 
You know, I mean, demon slayers unite. Again, where is this in scripture? Nowhere. You know, not one verse in scripture calls for us to go around slaying demons or binding demons or casting out demons. Nowhere. Yes, Jesus did that. Yes, Jesus gave his apostles and some close associates at the time that authority. But it was for a specific reason and a specific time. That's what it's about. Also, he, along with Vlad Savchuk, claimed that Christians can have demons. Eh, try again. So no, that is unbiblical. You cannot be filled and possessed by the Holy Spirit, owned, controlled by the Holy Spirit, and also be possessed by a demon. It is not possible. He also partners with false teachers, again, like Vlad and Alexander Pagini and Greg Locke, a host of false teachers. They're the big, you know, demon slayer club. They're all a bunch of proven false teachers. He twists God's word, and really at the end of the day, he's a charismatic con artist who is leading many people astray. Next on our list is Troy Black. And this is my opinion. I believe he is the most dangerous of almost anybody I've mentioned so far. Watch this. And before I jump into this, I wanna say a quick disclaimer. I am not jumping on here claiming to get everything right every single time. And the reason is because I'm still human and I am not perfect at hearing from God. And also, even when I hear very clearly and accurately, I'm not perfect at sharing it and interpreting what I've heard. And that's just the nature of prof prophecy. The New Testament talks about how we see in part and we prophesy in part. I do want to say this. I know anytime someone starts talking about prophetic messages and things like that, it can raise some red flags. So I want to say this up front. I don't consider myself perfect at hearing from the Lord. So prophets get their prophecy wrong? <laughs> no. I mean, does God get things wrong? Nope. Are there prophets today? Nope. Is God still speaking outside of his word? No. Scripture is very clear. Everything God had to say is written in his word. He spoke in the last days through his son, which we have full record of. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Everything we need is in scripture. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Yet this guy claims to hear directly from God. He quotes God. And a lot of times it's daily. You know, God showed me this. God told me dot, 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 quote this. It's a bunch of nonsense. And he gets it all wrong. But he'll say, oh, you know, it's okay. It, you know, there's, there's grace for that, that we can get it wrong. Come on now, dog. No. Said no verse ever. Look at this. This guy is a false prophet. And Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 20 through 22 is very clear. This guy does it for attention and for money. Please understand this. He was a nobody a few years ago. And then he came out with this breakthrough video that he had a dream about something and God showed him and God told him this. And he got hundreds of thousands of views and he just blew up into nowhere. Now he has a channel and he just, God showed me this and I woke up with this dream and God spoke to me about this. I mean, you know, according to Troy Black, God has a lot to say. What did he say? <laughs> hmm. I guess we don't have a closed canon. I mean, according to Troy, he should get out his pen and write this in the back of his Bible because God's not done speaking. How about no? That is absolutely incorrect. Please understand, it is vital, you guys, that we mark and avoid Troy Black because he is a liar and a con artist. Next is Catherine Crick. And wow, she is a doozy. Watch this. 1 Corinthians 14, 34. Apostle Paul says, Let your women keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but they are to be submissive, as the law also says. Why did he preach that? When you look at scripture, you need to look at the time period, and you need to look at the context, what was going on at that church of Corinth. The women in the church were being loud and distracting during church. That's just what they were doing at that time because they were being that way this obviously was making it so god's word was not being able to go forth because there was so, so much distraction it was messing with the work of god so because of what was going on apostle paul used wisdom for this moment in time and spoke a prophetic direction <laughs> Okay, women, you guys need to keep silent in the churches. Ask your husbands at home. Apostle Paul was not saying that for all women. What you just said 
is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. He was just speaking that for these women at that time because of what they were doing. So right there, she twists God's word and claims that it's okay for women to preach and it's okay for women to be pastors. And according to her, she's a female apostle. <laughs> no, this is all extremely unbiblical. She's twisting God's word to make it look okay to do what she does and not be called on the carpet for it. But it gets worse as she lies and manipulates people. Check this out. Hallelujah. I want to invite all of you now to praise God with your offering and to stay in his will and not break laws by not sowing. He asked you to sow. He asked you to give 10%, which is his, and he asked you to give more. Did you hear that pathetic plea for money? Oh, you guys gotta give a tithe. You gotta give 10%. Otherwise, you're not obeying God and you're not gonna be blessed. That is pure nonsense. It's unbiblical and she is manipulating people to get what she wants. There's not one verse in all of the New Testament to the church that commands us to give a tithe. The tithe was for Israel, not the church. Also, Paul is very clear about giving in 2 Corinthians. He says that when you give, you give cheerfully and you give what you've determined in your heart, not a certain percentage. This lady, it does not care about your holiness. She doesn't care about your relationship with Christ. She cares about filling her wallet and about having power and authority over people. Please understand that she violates God's word and she is to be marked and avoided. And also, when you look at this list, whether it's the first list or this part two list, it's very, very clear that we need to test everything. First John chapter four, verse one is so clear because if we don't test them, we're not gonna be able to know whether they are true or they are false. Are they from God or are they not? So. Before we end this, please understand that if you want to, comment below. Are there, are there channels that I've missed? Are there channels that we should add and do a part three eventually? Let me know. But please remember that we cannot just follow anyone we want because, hey, they look good or they have a lot of followers and subscribers or they used a few Bible verses. No, we must test everything and we must avoid those people who mix the truth with error.